when it comes to this whole Lamar Jackson and Baltimore Ravens negotiating, um, I think no matter which side you're on, no matter how you view the situation, no matter how you perceive everything that's happened to this point so far, I think one thing that we can all agree on, no matter who we are, no matter how we feel about everything, one thing that I guarantee we can all agree on is that we want a resolution. We want this thing to be fixed. We want this thing to be solved. We want this thing to be resolved. And Josina Anderson, she is offering a very unique solution when it comes to Lamar Jackson uh, and the Baltimore Ravens that could actually work for both sides. And we're going to get into that in a second. But first, Team Keep It Clean, I love you all. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on the video. And I hope that you're enjoying everything that we're bringing on here. Because we try to bring it for y'all, man. Because we love y'all. Y'all know that already. But anyway, let's get into this. Josina Anderson, she said, and we know Josina Anderson been covering this whole Lamar Jackson thing from beginning to, I was about to say beginning to end, but it, it's no end right now. But anyway, uh, sit back, relax, because we may be here for a little while, because she really, really like broke it down. Um, she said, outside of coming to an agreement on a multi-year deal, which that's what we figured that Lamar Jackson wants, uh, she said, outside of Magic Johnson winning the bid for the Washington Commanders and being like, all right, let's go get Lamar Jackson, outside of that happening. Also, outside of anything that could happen with the New England Patriots, with them shopping Mac Jones, and then, of course, remember the whole Meek Mill, Robert Kraft conversation, outside of any of that going down, she said that both sides should actually consider reuniting on a negotiated, uh, negotiated non-exclusive tag. So we right, know right now Lamar Jackson is sitting on that non-exclusive tag. It's worth 32.4 mil. He hasn't signed it yet. Um, but that's what the Ravens put on him, so that's 32.4 mil. It's all guaranteed, but it's 32.4 mil. Anyway, uh, she said Lamar is going to need some sort of feel-good offer to come back to Baltimore, and it would have to be over that 32.4 mil. Because, yeah, I mean, if, if that's what he was playing, I don't see him playing on that, like, at all. Anyway, she said, but why would the Ravens do that, especially when their market has been arguably correct so far? And what she meant by that was the fact that the Ravens, they place a non-exclusive franchise tag on him, and that gives him some freedom to negotiate with other teams to where they could sign him to the offer sheet. And if the Ravens chose to match, then they would keep Lamar. If the Ravens chose not to match, then they would get two first-round picks. But so far, there hasn't been any offers yet. And, I mean, we could think of a couple of different reasons why, but so far there haven't been any offers yet. So the Ravens, they're winning, right? So they're right about his market, right? But anyway, continuing. Uh, she said, but Lamar could reply that at a minimum, he wants to come back to a value of the exclusive tag, uh, which is about 45 mil. And she said, but, but Jacina said that one could argue that the value should even be above that at 46.2 mil. I was like, oh, 46.2 mil, okay, that's, is that, that's a random number, right? But no, it's not so random, because that will put Lamar Jackson over Deshaun Watson, his, over his 46 mil per year, and that will put him over Kyler Murray's 46.1 per year. But he would be under Russell Wilson's 48.5 per year, and under Aaron Rodgers' 50.3 per year. Oof, that was some, that's a lot of money, that's some good money. But anyway, um, she said, because according to someone, that's around the average that Lamar Jackson is seeking. So in this, she said, according to her source, somebody said that Lamar Jackson is seeking about 46.2 per. I'm like, okay, I, I could see that. Uh, but continuing, she said, so the Ravens could say, why would we do that and what would their counteroffer be? So why, why should we negotiate with you? Why should we pay you 46.2 mil per? For what? Again, this is a one-year deal, and this will be negotiating that non-exclusive tag. But anyway, um, she said they could say for Lamar that he will need to report to camp no later than the first practice after the draft. So these are, this would be one of those uh, stipulations put into the contract. Like, hey, okay, if we're going to pay you X, then you got to do this. If we're going to pay you this, then you got to do that. So, and, and that's part of contracts. If you sign a contract with somebody for anything, then there are going to be rules in that contract that you got to follow in order to fulfill that contract or have that contract fulfilled. Anyway, um, so she said, yeah, Ravens could be like, all right, he got to report to camp no later than the first practice after uh, the draft, um, especially with them having a new offensive coordinator and Todd Munkin and wanting to install that new offense. Um, they would have Lamar in there five to six weeks earlier than when it's mandatory, which is usually like in the first or second week of June. So that could help the Ravens out 
obviously, um, because that, that would remove and eliminate the threat of him holding out. Because the longer that he held out for, the bigger impact it would have on the Baltimore Ravens. And again, that's part of the leverage that Lamar has with the holdout. And that le- it, it could work a couple of different ways. Because it could work for Lamar. It could also work against Lamar. Um, it could work for Lamar and be like, hey, this is my impact on this team. You know what I'm worth. You know what I mean to this team. It ain't going to be the same without me. Y'all know that already. But then at the same time, if he continued to hold out through the season, it would definitely impact the Baltimore Ravens. But then at the same time, uh, he, and I don't think it would get this far, but hey, anything possible till it ain't possible no more. But if he continued to hold out through the season, during the season, um, and what if he held out the entire season, which I don't foresee happening, but then that would remove an accrued season for him. So then we'd be right back in a situation all next year. And I, I, I just don't think it needs to come to that, um, to where they back right back here another year. My, my thinking, like I said, I, I think that this thing should be resolved this year, this off season, and we'll see. We won't know till we know. But anyway, continuing, she said the Ravens could say, you know what, that's not enough. We need more than that. Um, the net increase from the non-exclusive tag to the exclusive tag to the 46.2 mil is 13.8 mil. So that's, that's from 32.4 mil to 46.2 mil. So 13.8 mil increase. So Ravens could actually tie up one mil of that, one mil of that 13.8 mil uh, to a workout bonus just to make sure that Lamar would be there to earn it. So as long as he showed up, to like right after the draft to that the workouts right after the draft then all right Lamar here one mail for you right there boom that's all you got to do and again that would help both sides Lamar would get that bread and the Ravens would get that quarterback there while they installing this new offense because then you would have all the rookies there and whatnot y'all start going through the process and whatnot it would just make life smoother but then there's that's that's only one mail there's still 12.8 mil left uh, she said that would knock down a 13.8 mil to 12.8. Then you divide the 12.8. See, this is where it gets a little tricky. But, hey, it could work. She said then you divide the 12.8 mil by 17 games. So that's an average of, of about 752,000 per game. So with that, Lamar shows up to play week one. Boom, you get 752,000. Week two, boom, another, another 752,000. Week three, four, five, six, seven. And now, then, December time. Because obviously that's been a big question with a lot of people. Hey, Lamar, are you going to play in December? Because this past year, he missed games. The previous year before that, he missed games. So, this gives incentive to both sides. And it helps both sides. Because with Lamar Jackson, hey, you show up and play, boom. Hey, you get the bread. Ravens, if Lamar Jackson doesn't show up and play, boom, we keep the bread. But then, what about the cap charge? Well, how, how would that work on the cap? Well, it, it, in order for this to, for the Ravens, they could be like, you know what? And this from Josina, what she said, they could tie that up into incentives. And they could put the language in there as not, not likely to be earned incentives. And what that does is that any not, not likely to be earned incentives that a player gets, they, that goes to the next year's cap. So it won't even be on a 2023 cap. It will be on a 2024 cap. So, but Lamar will still get the bread. He will still get the bread right then and there. But as far as the Ravens, it would push it to the next year's cap. So again, it is something that could work for both sides. So, um, and, and she said that could help the Ravens feel more comfortable, especially if they have questions about his injuries. I say, okay, I can see that. Because it, 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 it works for both sides. And then she said for people who say if Lamar gets 45 mil or 46.2 mil this year and they tag him next year, then he will get either 120% of the value of what he got this year in 2023 uh, or he will get the average of the top five paid QBs um, at that time, whichever one is higher. And, and this is again, this is for 2024. Because his 2024 salary, um, if tagged again, it will be based on either one of those two things. Either the the top five, uh, the average of the top five paid QBs, or 120% of what his 2023 salary was. Whichever one is higher. So that's something that will work out for him. Um, 
And she used the example of 54 mil. Uh, and she said, while that is a lot of money, it will still be just for one year. If they tagged him again. That's like a, a worst case scenario type of thing. If they tagged him again, paying him 54 mil, yeah, he, he would make a lot of money. And it would obviously all be guaranteed. But it would just be one for one year. See, and that's that's a tricky part. I mean, this whole thing is a tricky part. But... Um, and and that's where it could get really like, because, hey, getting that money, like even this year, this year, if he got the 46.2 mil, if he got that, great. It's nice. That's a nice increase. It's more than the non-exclusive franchise tag. It's more than the exclusive franchise tag. And that puts you right there. And that gives you that 46.2 average that apparently he may have been asking for. But. It does not give you long-term uh, guarantees. It does not give you that, that long-term. Uh, it doesn't take care of you for the long-term. It's only for one year. And while this would be an interesting resolution, that's the one part that I think would be or could be a holdup. Now, if they structured the, the deal like this and it was structured like this every year and it was a multi-year thing then i think oh okay all right that 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 wouldn't be so bad because that could work for both sides but while the structure i ain't got no problem with how this would be structured again it's just a one-year deal that would be my biggest pushback with this and i think that may be lamar's biggest pushback with this again there be a raise which would be nice but it's a very temporary raise. And you come back and you get another raise. But, again, it's not a long-term thing. It's not a long-term commitment. So, it could work for one year, but it could also not work for one year. But she did also say that even though it will be a one-year thing, this would not prevent the Baltimore Ravens from negotiating a new contract with him. So, while this will be a one-year thing now, next year if he got tagged again, it could be another one year thing, but it wouldn't prevent them from negotiating. So there's that. So again, th she had a lot of good that she said with this proposal. A lot of good, a lot, a lot of good points that she made, and she she really like broke it down, like really broke it down. Uh, I don't remember seeing anybody break it down like this before. So shout out to Josina Anderson. Um, but just that part would be the part that I think he may be a little skeptical about. But she did also say. Um, with all the quarterbacks getting ready to get paid, the market is the market. And she said, if the goal is to get a franchise quarterback that plays at a high level, then the cost is the cost. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. So let me know what y'all think about this offer. Because, um, again, it, like I said, it had a lot of good. But then the, I think the only bad about it um, would be the – that it's not a multi-year deal. Now, um, it definitely would could help both, both sides, could benefit from it. But now another reason I think Lamar could possibly give some pushback would be if like, I, oh, man, y'all y'all not going to give me that 12 point? Oh, I got to, it's, it's a per game thing? That's the only way I can see it being a little pushback. Because um, it's like, all right, I, I, I got to show up to get that 12.8 that mil. Not that he wouldn't want to show up, but... I, it may, maybe he may want to have that like guaranteed from jump. Like, no, that's that's guaranteed for me to get. I I, I don't know, I don't know. We don't know. Um, or he could be like, hey, you know what? That's cool. All right. Oh, that I, I get that seven hundred fifty-two k for every game that I play. Oh, okay, cool. No problem. No problem. But I don't know. So I guess um I would have to look at how a lot of other quarterbacks' contracts are structured when it comes to that because. I, I, I just I just don't know how the other deals, like especially these other top deals, I don't know how those are structured. But anyway, shout out to just Josina Anderson. I know the comment section of this one should be really fun. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all again. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, I, I appreciate everything that y'all do. Thank you for watching. And like hopefully Lamar won't be this offseason. Even though, even after this, her breakdown, Josina's breakdown and her resolution for this whole thing, I still got my doubts, but hopefully like Lamar won't be this offseason when it comes to being with the Baltimore Ravens. We out.